Okay, so we've talked about different gestures that artists use sometimes, and we've talked about different footprints that your paintbrushes can have. Let me make sure that this is visible. Okay, that should be good. Um, so each of these different brushes will have a different footprint. So I'm just making sure that, okay, yeah, you can still see me, cool. Um, sorry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try picking a couple brushes and kind of like a scientist, I'm going to try some different gestures and just kind of watch what happens based on how you move your brush. So I would challenge you that you should try to do at least maybe four or five different gestures with a couple of your brushes and just kind of see what happens. So you can make a small gesture that's basically just like the footprint of your brush, just when you like kind of press it down once. You can make a longer gesture where you're kind of like stroking it on. You can try, you know, different directions of gestures. You can try wavy lines. You can even, it kind of like, you can see how this dried out. I could either leave it like that or I could go back and paint over it again. Kind of whatever I want to do just as far as gestures go. And the cool thing with something like this where we're trying to create an abstract pattern, you can just kind of do the same gesture over and over in different colors and end up with really a cool texture to your painting when you're done. So I'm gonna try this with at least one other brush. So when I look at the different gestures, you just kind of want to be like a scientist and observe what happens based on how you're moving your brush so you can be in control of it um, and kind of figure out what feels good or what looks good to you, what you like and what you don't like. So this is a much bigger footprint that this brush made. This is a much smaller footprint. This one's a little wider. Um, I don't really, if, if I'm picking from which ones I like the best, this one is okay. This one is probably my favorite. I don't really like that little small mark that that brush makes. It might be useful sometimes, but for this project, I want to cover a little more area. So I don't know that I would necessarily use this brush a whole lot, unless maybe I'm using it for my lettering. Um, so once I've got some gestures practiced, the next thing I want you to practice a little bit is maybe some layering techniques. So. I'm gonna use a little yellow, and if I just use the yellow as it is, I'm gonna to try to find a spot that's dry. You can see how I can see right through it. If I wanted it to cover, if I wanna do a layer over it, I'm not gonna mix it in my cup, hang on. Okay, there's my palette. Um, I'm gonna mix just a little bit of white into my paint. And with the yellow, you really can't even see that there's any white in it, but when I layer it over, it covers, not completely, but a lot better than it did, for sure. Um, sometimes if you really want to block it out, you might have to put it on pretty thick or do a couple layers and let them dry between. You could also do a light color underneath and then a dark color on top. Um, that's kind of an easy way to layer that's pretty forgiving. Or um, if I wanted to have yellow around this shape, I could just paint around it. And that's a technique I'm gonna use a lot when I work on my banner, is trying to paint around things and not paint you know, over them quite so much. So you can either do it in layers where you paint everything and then go on top of that, or you can kind of go around. 